Wi-Fi is a term that is pretty much ubiquitous with all of us at this point. It's probably how the majority of you are even watching this video. But if we focus on the smart home, how does Wi-Fi work when it comes to smart home devices? And is there any difference to say the Wi-Fi that we have in our phones? And what are the pros and cons? Welcome to the Smart Home Protocol series, where we are going to be doing a deep dive on protocols that our smart home devices use to communicate with each other in our smart homes. And we are kicking this one off with Wi-Fi. So right off the bat, is the Wi-Fi that exists in our smart home devices different to the Wi-Fi that we find in our smartphones? Fundamentally, no, they are the exact same thing. A Wi-Fi device will connect to a wireless access point or router using radio frequencies, typically on the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz spectrum, whose job it is to route data packets to its intended destination, be that somewhere on the internet or another device on your local network. Wireless routers like this can support as little as say 30 devices at one time, all the way up to hundreds of devices at the same time, each of which is talking and sending data simultaneously that is being delivered and received at its intended destination in just a matter of milliseconds. Each connected Wi-Fi device will have what's called an internet protocol or IP address, which is a unique identifier for that device that allows it to talk to other devices. Without a unique IP address, data would have no way of reaching its intended destination. Now that is an extremely oversimplified explanation of how Wi-Fi works. So what are some of the things that makes Wi-Fi so good for smart home devices in the first place? Because Wi-Fi does have a lot going for it, at least on the surface. The most obvious reason would be convenience. At this point, everyone and their grandma knows what Wi-Fi is at the very least and how to connect a device to their Wi-Fi. It is also great because it doesn't need any extra equipment to get it working, assuming you already have Wi-Fi in your house, no extra hubs like some other protocols do, meaning that your house isn't going to be littered with tons of extra cheap white plastic boxes, all consuming power. Speaking of power, Wi-Fi is also great for speed with its massively superior data transmission rate compared to many other protocols, and these days can push more than one gigabit per second in comparison to say Zigbee's paltry 250 kilobits per second. And this makes it much more suitable for certain applications like a video doorbell or CCTV camera where you need that extra speed and bandwidth. Wi-Fi is also great for being built on an actual true standard where manufacturers of devices have no choice but to stick to the correct implementation in order for them to actually work. Think about it, right? There is millions and millions of different Wi-Fi devices out there in the world, all of which need to be able to connect to thousands of different models of wireless router. And if a manufacturer tried to tell you that you could only use their specific device with their specific router, chances are you probably wouldn't be buying any more products from them and they probably wouldn't be in business anymore. This final one is both a pro and a con for Wi-Fi. You remember earlier I said that it doesn't require you to buy any extra hubs for Wi-Fi to work. Well, because of that, that makes Wi-Fi very cheap to get started with because you don't need to buy any extra equipment, which is obviously great, but it also means that Wi-Fi is internet routable, meaning that devices can talk directly to the internet without the need for any conversion through a hub or router. Now that's nice for simplicity. It's super easy to get your devices connected to the internet in a matter of minutes so that you can access them from anywhere in the world. But the flip side of that is that it makes it very easy for devices to be sending a stream of data to servers on the internet without you ever knowing about it and without knowing what information is being sent and collected about you. This also opens up the potential for hackers to gain access to your smart home, causing you to be the star of your very own horror movie. So that was a lot of pros for Wi-Fi. It's cheap, it's fast, it's super simple to get started with, and there is no extra equipment required. But what about the cons? Honestly, Wi-Fi does have a lot going for it, but it's not all perfect. Remember earlier I mentioned Wi-Fi is great for devices that need a lot of speed? Well, that speed comes at a price, power consumption. 
Wi-Fi is very heavy when it comes to how much power it draws in comparison to some other protocols, making it unsuitable for anything that you want to run on battery power, unless you want to change the batteries every day or two. Battery sensors are so convenient for a lot of reasons and essential for some other reasons, and this is where Wi-Fi's biggest downfall is when it comes to the smart home. Wireless sensors such as motion sensors, contact sensors, temperature sensors, heck, even these wireless automated curtains just don't exist with Wi-Fi in them because of how much power it draws. So if you were to try and stay exclusively to using Wi-Fi products only, you would miss out on a ton of potential in your smart home. Another con that many of you may not have considered is the impact that loading up your Wi-Fi router can have on your Wi-Fi experience. Many of the ISP provided and low-end wireless routers are simply not designed or capable of having more than say 30 Wi-Fi devices connected to them at any one time. And if you connect lots of low bandwidth Wi-Fi devices to your router, it will actually start to impact the speed of your other high performance devices like phones and laptops because your router is constantly having to manage the connection of these other devices. Some of you will have high performance wireless networks, which is great, but many of you won't and you won't have realized the impact it can have on your Wi-Fi performance. Sometimes it's also nice to just have a separate dedicated network for your smart home devices. For example, if you have to reboot your Wi-Fi router or update the firmware, then at least you won't have to stand there poking your smart home devices with a stick, trying to get them to reconnect. That is some of the pros and cons of Wi-Fi. So what's the final verdict? Can we use it? Should we avoid it? Of course not. Wi-Fi is a good protocol to use and makes sense so long as it's the correct situation. Wi-Fi is perfectly acceptable for devices that are going to be wired into mains power and need to make use of that higher data speeds. For example, in video applications, and it also makes sense if you don't already have a lot of Wi-Fi devices or you have a strong Wi-Fi network in place. However, Wi-Fi shouldn't be used in situations where you want or you need to rely on battery power, for example, with wireless sensors, where it would make more sense to use another protocol like Bluetooth, Z-Wave, or Zigbee. Speaking of Zigbee, that is going to be the subject of the next video in the series, so make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. And finally, to address the inevitable comments that will crop up saying that hard wiring is better, of course it is not only for its speed, latency, and reliability, but this particular video is about Wi-Fi, and we will talk about hard wiring in a future video. Hopefully you enjoyed this first video in the Smart Home Protocol series, and it's cleared up some of the questions you had around using Wi-Fi in your smart home. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed, and leave your comments for what you want me to cover in the future Smart Home Protocol series, and I will make sure that I will see you, I will make sure I will see you in the next video. <laughs>